Hello everyone and welcome to yet another talk. So as humans in general and as highly sensitive people in particular, why are we so often fixated on fixing others? We oftentimes find others overwhelming and yet we can still find ourselves caught up in their feelings and problems despite our intentions. How come and does it have to be that way? In today's talk, we'll try to provide answers to those questions or failing that, at least try to provide some interesting food for thought. So in the last talk, we explored why we're so often drawn to others, be it trying to solve their problems or giving advice or regulating their emotions or showing empathy or whatever the case may be. So to briefly recap, we said we naturally gravitate towards other people because at the very least, it's often number one, easier and number two, safer. Uh, safer than dealing with our own inner world. We said that both are the, are the result of or are made possible by the distance between ourselves and others, between subject and object. This same distance is both what makes it easier to think about certain issues and see them more clearly, as well as what makes it safer or more comfortable to discuss unpleasant matters or negative things that we'd rather not admit to or have to deal with in ourselves. So to be, to be both the subject, the person doing the observing, and the object, the person or thing observed, to be both is very difficult, if at all possible. It's much easier to recognize our traits, emotions, sensations, and so on in others and deal with them as object. If we can't recognize them in others, we can even go as far as to project them entirely onto others. And so by dealing with others, we're inevitably dealing with ourselves. Even if we may not be consciously aware of it, when giving others advice, it's often similar to the advice we ourselves are in need of. When showing others empathy, it's often the empathy we are most lacking and in need of ourselves, and so on and so on, of course. Now, especially for people that are highly sensitive or HSPs, it's useful to recognize when trying to fix others is actually about trying to fix ourselves, which it often is, or at least I think it, it often is. People that are highly sensitive very often complain that they can't stop dealing with others, that they can't help taking on other people's emotions, even if they don't want to. And the, again, this is a very common HSP issue. Our aim today is to see how exactly this takes place and if there's anything we can do about it. And all of this, of course, has to do with parts. And a fancy term for this is the multiplicity of the psyche. So we'll be discussing the multiplicity of the psyche today. So none of us are made of a single unitary part, even if we refer to ourselves as individuals. That is something so basic and unitary that it cannot be divided. We experience ourselves as one, that much is true, but we don't, uh, but we don't have to do more than merely scratch the surface to immediately come across many different aut autonomous parts of ourselves. In fact, one of the pillars of mental health is to be able to experience oneself as one while at the same time being many or recognizing that there are many different parts to us. Being both one and many at the same time is far from an easy thing to do, of course. However, it's simply what is. It's how we're all built and there's nothing wrong with it. It's not pathological and it's far from a multiple personality dis um, disorder diagnosis or uh, dissociative identity disorder as it's known today. So we're all made up of many different autonomous parts. Depending on the author or theory in question, these are called ego states, self states, parts, and so on. Now we export or project those parts of ourselves onto others, or at the very least, we recognize those parts of ourselves in others that are similar to our own. That is to say that we temporarily view subject or part of subject as object. Let's have a look at what Let's have a look at what this all looks like in practice, what we mean by exporting or projecting parts and so on. So here's an example of a rather straightforward inner conflict. Let's say one part of us feels we should stay at home and get some work done since a lot has piled up recently and we feel we should really get on top of things. Another opposing part says we've been working incessantly lately and we're on the verge of burnout or falling ill and so are in desperate need of a break before it's too late. So part A wants 
wants to stay home and get some work done. Part B wants to take it easy, to relax, or even to go out and unwind with the help of a few drinks. Let's call part A the hard worker and part B the easy goer. These two parts are in conflict that they find difficult to resolve, a conflict that the conscious eye might not even be aware of, at least not in the sense of happening between two distinct autonomous parts. We might simply experience it as diffuse anxiety and not delve deeper. If this is a conflict that we experience often, if this is something that we experience as important or particularly, particularly troubling, then we're almost certain to do what we generally tend to do in such situations, and that is to try to resolve, to resolve it with the help of fellow human beings. And so when we're, talking with someone, when we're talking with someone else that is clearly running himself or herself into the ground by working too hard, part B, the easygoing part, uh, springs into action. It recognizes the hard worker in another and says, Aha, finally I have you right where I want you. Finally you've appeared in flesh, not in there where it's also murky and, and abstract, but here, outside, as concrete as can be. Stay right there. Let's settle this once and for all. And so as that part takes over and becomes, and becomes executive, we start saying something along the lines of the following to the other party. You always work so hard. Can't you see it's not working? Can't you see you're headed for burnout or worse? You're so silly. The, the solution is so simple. Why don't you just take a break every now and then? What's the hurt in taking it easy and getting some much needed rest? You're so silly to not be able to see this. It's so clear what the right thing to do is. From my perspective, it looks perfectly straightforward. It's a no-brainer. Take my advice and just take a break. You'll see it'll all work out just fine. And so, we start interacting externally with the other uh, person, one who objectively may be suffering from the same or a similar inner conflict, but at the same time interacting, interacting uh, internally or trying to interact internally with our then dormant part that we've recognized in or projected onto the other person. We're, we're, uh, we're directly talking with another human being externally, and at the same time we're talking internally to an inner human being indirectly or by proxy. And, uh, and so <laughs> in that conversation we of course become, be, um, become the all-knowing sage, the one who will resolve the conflict in the, uh, in the other person, and by doing so show the hard-working part of ourselves what needs to be done. By working on the problem in another, we're hoping to work on it or even to fix it in ourselves. Now, it's worth keeping in mind that even though the, the other part, the hard worker, isn't part of the executive eye in the moment, it's still listening and observing uh, closely. Parts that are latent or dormant are still very much aware, observing, listening, and so on. And so we unconsciously hope that by witnessing this external interaction, by witnessing another person undergo a certain change, the hard worker within will become less uncompromising in her or his views, and that this will lead to an internal improvement. The external player drama is almost always tied intimately to our internal drama. External relations and relationships have much to do with internal relations and, relation, uh, and relationships. And yes, there, are, there is such a thing as internal relationships because uh, there are internal people. And, uh, and then we of course come to the reversal of, uh, of roles. Of course, the opposite happens when we're interacting with someone who indulges herself or himself too frequently or is too lax about doing whatever needs to be done. Then part A, the hardworking one, recognizes the easygoer in another and takes over. And it says, aha, there you are. Finally, I have you right in front of me where I can see you. No more hiding. No more of that obscure, hidden, inner conversation. Now we can talk face to face in the light of day. And of course, we start giving uh, the other person advice along the lines of, can't you see that you're neglecting your responsibilities? How isn't it obvious to you that you're just, ri that you're just running away from your problems? Just sit down and get some work done and see how fast you feel better about yourself and how quickly your situation improves. Why are you so narrow-minded? It's so ridiculously obvious what you have to do. It's not a tough decision at all. You can't have fun all of the time. Life is not all play. So. Uh, again, we become the wise advisor and the one who seemingly just knows better, this time, however, with a diametrically opposite viewpoint. However, the end goal remains the same. 
dealing with one's subject matter as object matter and influencing the inner via the outer. And so to, to recap before bringing today's talk to an end, today we've basically just said that number one, we're all made of parts. Number two, these parts interact with one another in much the same manner as people interact with, uh, with one another. And number three, hence that the outer interpersonal world is intimately linked to one's um, inner interpersonal world and that one's inner world is just as relational as the outer one, that the same rules apply to both. So um, to me at least, none of these statements are extreme or weird or difficult to grasp. Um, in fact, I find them to be quite, uh, quite intuitively true. But of course, that's, uh, um, uh, that's, uh, that's me, of course. So uh, the point we're trying to make is the following. Uh, if we unconsciously keep finding ourselves in tricky interpersonal situations, and if we just can't seem to stop ourselves from taking on other people's problems or emotions against our will, then it would probably prove useful to turn inward and deal with our uh, own inner world directly as opposed to dealing with it indirectly via others. This can be very effective and nothing short of transformative. And next time we'll have a look at how exactly we can go about uh, doing that. So uh, thank you for, for tuning in to, to yet another talk. Uh, I hope you're all doing well and um, yeah, take care.